If you have ever wondered how to pray in tongues, this video is for you. This will be one of the most important videos that a Christian can watch. Obviously, the most important thing is that you get saved, that you give your life to Christ. But after that, as a Christian, Jesus has called us to pray in tongues. Jesus has called us to be filled with the Spirit. So if you have any questions about tongues, if you want to pray in tongues yourself, or if you want to learn whether tongues is for all believers, some believers, a little bit of believers, or no believers, I'll be answering those questions on this video and be telling you a little bit of my testimony. So stick around to the end. I do encourage you, go grab your Bible and don't just listen to me. Don't just trust me just because I tell you something. Trust these words because they will be the words of God. These are not Gabe's opinion. This isn't just Gabe's channel. It may be my name on the channel, but really this is God's opinion. Really, this is what God says to us today. I'm so excited. First of all, if you're wondering how to pray in tongues, I'm going to take you through those steps. And at the end of this video, I'm going to pray with you for you to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I just encourage you to put aside those pre-assumptions, to put aside those things that maybe you've grown up with, those traditions, those religious traditions. Just be open to the word of God today. Amen? All right, first things first in order to pray in tongues. You must be saved. You must give your life to Christ. Jesus said in Acts chapter 1 and verse 4, when they're all assembled together, commanded that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but that they should wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days hereafter. What he meant by that was Jesus was with his disciples. He was chilling with his disciples, his homies, the people that had already given their lives to him. The first step to receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit is, you gotta be saved, honey boo boo. You gotta give your life to Christ. So so I just want to make sure that everybody watching this video, you have given your life to Christ. You say, Gabe, I've been to church. You say, Gabe, I've been baptized. Gabe, I'm a member of my church. Gabe, I think I'm a good person. None of those things will save you. The only thing that will save you is if you say yes to Jesus Christ. So real quickly, just pray these words after me and you can give your life to Christ right now so that I know that everybody watching this video is saved so that we can get everybody baptized in the Holy Spirit too, okay? Pray these words after me. Father, I believe Jesus Christ died on the cross and rose again. Jesus, I repent of my sins. I give my life to you. Amen. Amen. Now that was a really simple prayer and there's other videos that I can take you more through the basics of salvation, but that was just to ensure that everybody had given their lives to Christ, right? The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Because you have given your life to Christ, now the Holy Spirit, Jesus has promised you. Now, the reason why we wait for the Holy Spirit, the reason why we even have the baptism of the Holy Spirit is because it helps us become a better witness. And I want to tell you a quick story about myself, and then we'll keep learning about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. When I was 15 years old, six years ago, well, almost six years ago, I'm about to turn 21 this November. Almost six years ago, I was all by myself. I was 15 years old in my bedroom watching a Bible study just like you are right now. And I stood up and I started praying to God and I said, God, I love you. God, I love you. God, I love you. And the Holy Spirit flooded my room and he actually knocked me to my butt. Now, I'm not promising you that the Holy Spirit will do the same way to you, but I do know this. He knocked me to my butt and I started praying in tongues. And I just remember God spoke to me. He said, you will see miraculous signs and wonders in your high school. He showed me how he forgave me of my sins, how he washed me in his blood and how he had called me to live for him from this day forward. And it changed everything. And ever since since that day, I've been praying in tongues almost every single day. Don't ever listen to someone that talks about tongues, but they don't pray in tongues themselves. That would be like you go to a pool and you ask someone, hey, how does the pool feel? And But they tell you, they say, well, I'm not in it, but it's pretty cold. How would they know? How are they supposed to know if they've never been in it? The only way you can know about tongues is if you prayed in tongues before. And there's so many Christians out there that they say so many things about tongues and they ain't never prayed in tongues before. And God's sitting up in heaven like, really? Really? You think that? <laughs> but again, don't listen to my words. This is what the Bible says. Keep listening in Acts chapter one and verse seven. Jesus said, Jesus said in verse seven, it's not for you to know the times or the seasons which the father has put in his own power. Verse eight, but you will receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. You will be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. In Matthew chapter three, it describes Jesus as the one who baptizes us with the Holy Spirit and fire. And by now you're probably wondering, what is the difference between the baptism of water and the baptism of the Holy Spirit? The baptism of water is a way that we show others. It's like a marriage ring. It's a way that we show others our commitment to Christ. But the baptism of the Holy Spirit is when we receive a deeper, when we receive an infilling of the Holy Spirit so that we can be witnesses unto God. And a lot of people question about praying in tongues, but I want to give you guys a couple of scriptures right now. All throughout Acts, Acts is our example. Acts is the first church. You say the Catholic church is the first church. No, it ain't. Acts is actually the first church. And in Acts chapter 10 and in verse 45, they of the circumcision which believed were astonished. So those were Jews, as many as Peter, because on the Gentiles, Gentiles and Jews, now at first when the gospel was going out, at first they thought just the Jews would receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. They had given their life to Christ, right? Jews that, mess Messianic Jews that given their life to Christ. But they didn't know about the Gentiles. Now Gentiles are you and me, most likely, unless you live um, as a Jew in Israel. But 
Anyways, listen to the scripture. In verse 45, it says, As many as on Peter, because on the Gentiles was poured out the gift of the Holy Spirit. Verse 46, For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. So, to answer that question, is every Christian called to speak in tongues? The answer is yes. The Bible clearly states that when the Holy Spirit comes, tongues is the immediate gift that follows after that. Now, that being said, you do receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And just because you might not pray in tongues right away doesn't mean you don't have the Holy Spirit. Every Christian has the Holy Spirit. But the baptism of the Holy Spirit is a deeper experience that God has called you to. Listen to this in Acts chapter 2. And again, I just encourage you, because a lot of people will make a lot of arguments. They'll say, well, it's for some Christians, it's not for others. The Bible says that in Acts chapter 10 that God is no respecter of persons. And then in Hebrews chapter 13, it says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. And what God does for one, he'll do for you as well. And what God did for the disciples in Acts, he'll do for you too. The disciples in Acts aren't some special Christians. They're just like you and me. Acts chapter two, <laughs> Acts chapter two. And again, please don't scroll off this video if you're about to go to another video because we're just about to pray for the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So if you're thinking about doing something else, don't do something else. I feel like a mom right now. Focus, focus up. Mama Gabe says, focus. Okay. <laughs> Acts chapter two, listen to this. Um, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. It filled all the house where they were sitting and there appeared unto them tongues like fire. And he sat upon each of them, verse four. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Now I will address one common argument that comes against this argument of tongues. They say, well, what about the scripture in 1 Corinthians that says to each is given different gifts and some have gift of tongues and some don't? Well, the specific gifts that that Corinthian scripture is talking about is when you're in a church, when you're in a body and there's a specific tongue and a specific interpretation to that tongue in that language. But the general gift of tongues, you could say it like this, the general prayer language is given to all men. Listen to one more scripture because the Bible says in the mouth of two or three witnesses will every word be established. Amen, period. Acts chapter 19 and verse one says, it came to pass while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul having passed through the upper coast came to Ephesus, finding certain disciples. He said unto them, have you received the Holy Spirit since you believed? So notice these people had already believed on Jesus Christ. They were believers like you and me. But Paul literally asked him, he said, have you received the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Keep listening. It says in verse three, he said unto them, until then what were you baptized? They said, John's baptism. So water baptism, right? So a Christian, it's not enough to just be water baptized. Now I will address the question. Does every Christian have to pray in tongues to go to heaven? No, we know that we're saved. We're already headed to heaven. But tongues is the way that we can become a more powerful witness to other people. It's a way that we can build up ourselves. According to Jude says, you build up yourselves in the Holy Spirit. As you pray in tongues, now, now the way you witness to other people is in your, the language they understand, right? But your personal prayer language, tongues, is how you build yourself up so you can be stronger in faith and stronger in love so that other people can see the light of Christ through you. Keep listening, Acts chapter 19, Verse three, he said, what were you baptized? They said, John's baptism. Verse four, then Paul said, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying that the people should believe on him, which come after him, Christ Jesus. In verse five, when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. So they were baptized in water. But then listen to this in verse six, when Paul laid his hands upon them, the Holy Spirit came on them and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. So now that we're here on the conclusion of this video, by now I hope you understand that tongues is for every believer, that it is God's will for you to have tongues. Never question God's will. Never think to yourself, well, maybe God wants me to have it, maybe he doesn't. No, God is a good God. And I guarantee you, God gave me tongues, he'll give you tongues too. I ain't no special Christian. Gabe, how do we say this prayer? Well, the most important thing when we say this prayer is that you believe you receive it. Listen to this in Mark chapter 11. And again, I know I'm going really quickly here in this video. So if you have to slow down, feel free to slow down. But in Mark chapter 11, verse 22, Jesus answering said unto them, have faith in God. Then look with me in verse 24. Therefore, I say to you, whatsoever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive and you shall have. The most important thing about tongues that you need to understand, when we say this prayer, believe that you receive it and you shall have it. Don't question, don't allow any doubt to come into your heart. Now, you may have thoughts of doubt, that's okay, but 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 just believe it in your heart. Believe that when we pray right now, you're going to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, period. Amen. It's simple. It's easy. Now, what do you do once you pray? Well, the Bible says that when the Holy Spirit came on them, they spoke with other tongues, but you must yield to the Holy Spirit. Have you ever seen a car when you go onto another highway? What does that car do? That car flows with the traffic. Have you ever, if you flow with the wrong way, you're going to get hit and it's not going to work out well. But if you flow with the traffic, if you merge, if you yield, you'll go with the traffic. That's what we have to do with our tongues in our mouth. Now in Acts chapter two, it says, and they spoke with tongues. What that means is God isn't going to use his mouth. No, it's your mouth, your lips right here. See my lips? They kind 
kind of chaps. It's going to be your lips. It's going to be your tongue. See my little tongue right here? It's going to be your tongue. Well, my tongue kind of, oh, maybe my, I hope my tongue ain't got nothing bad. Well, I got a booger. Oh, okay. Game focus. Okay. <laughs> It's going to be your um, body, but it's going to be God flowing through you. Does that make sense? So when we pray, the way that you want to use your lips and tongue is you just open it up. And as you use your voice and just let your voice come out, God fills it. Now, when you first start out, it'll be mutters. Have you ever heard a white person speak in Spanish? Uh-uh. It, ain't, it, ain't, it doesn't go well, does it? It sounds weird. Or have you ever heard a different language? So that is why, to answer that question, if you're wondering, well, what if I'm just stuttering? What if I'm just muttering? Yes, that yes, you, you, that's what it will sound like. It will be confusing. And in your mind, you'll think, oh, is this just me? Or do I even know what I'm doing? Is this of the devil? Is this satanic? No, no, no. You can trust God. Trust God that when we pray right now, he's going to fill you with the Holy Spirit, period. Amen. And when you pray in tongues, you're going to have thoughts of doubt. You're going to think to yourself, is this just me? What is happening right now? What is this? Just know that God has called you to pray in tongues. You say, well, what language is it? Well, the Bible says there's languages of angels and of earth. So what that means is you don't necessarily need to know the language. Now, will there be specific times in your life where maybe God gives you a language to speak to someone? Maybe. But in general, the prayer language, your prayer language, the tongues, you're not even called to understand what language that is. That's between God and, and heaven. And the good news is the devil doesn't understand it either. That's really, sorry, I just burped. That's really the reason why you don't know is because you don't want the devil to know either, right? Amen. So wherever you are, let's pray right now. Now I will say, if you don't want to pray in the, for tongues, if you don't want to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you can scroll off this video. I don't blame you. If you don't want to get in and have a bunch of fun and be on fire for God and witness to other people and see miracles and, and just be more on fire for God, you don't have to stay here. I, I ain't going to force you. <laughs> but if you're still here, here we go. Close your eyes with me. <laughs> and just put your hand on your heart and say these words after me. God, I believe in Jesus. Jesus, according to your word, will you now baptize me in the Holy Spirit? By faith, I receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now, wherever you are, keep your eyes closed. I'm going to lay my hand on this phone, on this camera, as an act of faith, just like I was with you in person. And I'm going to pray for you right now. Keep your eyes closed. Jesus, I thank you for the Holy Spirit and fire. Holy Spirit, fire. Flood them right now. Father, I thank you. Jesus, we thank you. They have the baptism of the Holy Spirit from this point forward. We receive our prayer language. Amen. Now, if you believe you receive it, just keep your eyes closed and just put your eyes under God and open up your mouth, open up your tongue. It's going to sound very weird. It's going to sound like mutters or just ba, ba, ba. When I first started out praying in tongues, it was very small syllables. And then it, as I prayed more often every single day, it got more deeper and it got more developed. So wherever you are, by faith, if you believe you have it, just open up your mouth. You say, Gabe, what do I say? Well, let God do that. Just open up your mouth, open up your syllables. Don't be afraid of what comes out. And again, don't think, is this me? Is this God? No, just go. Just let it rip. It's like a fart. You just let her rip. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. Please comment down below. If you prayed in tongues in the first time, or if you learned something new about tongues, comment down below your name or where you're from or something about yourself and what you learned from this specific video. Something I love to do is go through those comments and I try to like almost every single one. So comment down below if you can. Smash the like button so more people see this video. I encourage you, set a timer every single day for maybe five or 10 minutes and tell yourself that you're gonna pray in tongues for that time. If you wanna learn more about tongues, I've made some more videos for you down below. If you wanna learn more about how to hear God's voice or how to read the Bible, you can click those videos down below. Be sure to subscribe. I don't say that for myself, I just say it for you. We do live Bible studies Fridays, Sundays at 9 p.m. Eastern. We do Bible study uploads and God videos all throughout the week. So I'll see you, I'll see you, see you guys next time on the channel. Thanks so much for joining. Please share this video to another Christian friend if you can. If you have another Christian friend that wants to know about the Holy Spirit, please hit that share button and send a message to them. I don't say that for ourselves, right? We say that so we can spread this gospel because we need more Christians on fire. Amen. I love you. God loves you. Jesus is King. I'll see you next time. Be sure to go check out those videos. I'll see you next time on the channel as well. Keep your notification bell on. Bye.